Hi guys, this is Todd Fool, and for today we're going to review the Shit Ager Power Amp. Most audio fools will agree that Class A amplifiers are the best sounding amplifiers of all topologies, but it's also the worst in terms of efficiency. It's big and heavy, runs really hot, eats up a lot of electricity, and most of all, very expensive for the amount of output power it provides. So it's not really a surprise that a lot of amplifier makers are looking to get that Class A sound while minimizing those drawbacks. Well, this piece of shit supposedly sounds really close to Class A, so let's put it to the test against a Ragnarok 1, RCAM A39, and a Class A Pioneer M22. But before that, let's take a closer look. At the front, you have a standby button as well as LEDs for standby and operation modes. On top, you see the shit logo and heatsink fins on the side. This is kind of annoying because it's difficult to grasp the amplifier from the sides as they are kind of sharp so you need to hold it from the front and back if you wanted to move it, which poses another problem since the cables get in the way. Still, it's a nice industrial trademark shitty design, which might be kind of boring since most cheap amplifiers look the same way, like my DIY Amp Camp Amp. At the back, you have RCA inputs in a single XLR connection if you plan to go monoblocks. Speaker outputs and power switch in the middle, which kind of makes things a little bit harder to turn on and off, but you can just use the standby switch at the front instead. You do have to remember that this amp only does 20 watts at 8 ohms, 40 watts at 4 ohms, but if you have access to a fully balanced preamp and another ager, going mono can give you another 80 watts at 8 ohms. For the Age of Freya versus the Ragnarok 1, I used the Yggdrasil and the Kef LS50s for the test. And for all my test tracks, I like the Age better. To give some credit to the Ragnarok, the bass in the Ragnarok 1 was a little bit more forceful and a little bit louder. Soundstage is also a slightly bigger and most notes had a richer feel. But the Age just had more detail and microdynamics, tons of it. Soundstage is not as big as the RAG, but it has way more depth, giving better placement and separation between instruments. It made each instrument sound a bit more natural and a bit more refined, and despite not being as full as the RAG, it actually had more overtones and resolution. The Ragnarok 1 is my reference amp for a good reason. It's simply one of the best amps I've heard with the Kef LS50s, but in this case, the shit ager sounded better and at a lower price point. I haven't heard the Ragnarok 2 yet, but it really needs to sound a lot better than the original Rag 1 in order to compete with the ager. Next, using the Tekton impact monitors, we put up the ager in Freya with the Arcam A39 amp, a powerful 120 watt Class G integrated amp with the first 20 watts in Class A, and it was no contest. Despite having a 100 watt disadvantage, I completely preferred the Ager. Similar to the RAG, the Arkham comes up better in terms of bass quantity, having more SPL, which helps in songs needing more slam and power, as well as having a slightly taller and wider soundstage. And going one better than the Ragnarok, the Arkham actually sounds cleaner and have blacker blacks, but despite this, it still sounds more veiled and less detailed than the Ager. The Arcam is also rolled off in the highs, sounding a bit dull with a lot less bite. Vocals, piano, and guitar notes are better rendered in the Ager and it also sounds a lot more fun. The Arcam is a good integrated amp with fantastic bass control and a decent phono stage, but it just sounds a little bit too neutral in comparison and lacks a little bit of life for my taste. Despite having 20 watts of Class A, it doesn't sound nearly as good as the Ager. Perhaps it just needs to let loose and have fun, take a hint from Reagan name, and hopefully the newer models will have more of those. Finally, using Dali Rubicon 2s, we pit the faux Class A to real Class A, the Pioneer M22, a vintage 30 watt pure Class A that I hate moving because it's so darn heavy. And again, it was no contest, but this time it's the Ager that gets its butt whipped. 
The most noticeable difference is the soundstage. It's so much wider, deeper, and taller. And then the music is also so much more forward and it feels like the music is all around you rather than you watching the band from afar, which is what I was feeling with the AJ in comparison. The music just seems to be more alive and no details are lost, nor the highs and lows fatiguing. In fact, it actually has more clarity in detail and every sound seems to have better timbre. The M22s haven't been in production for a long time, and while you could probably find one at the cost of an ager, you still need to factor in the cost of refurbishing. The agers will be very competitive against some Class A amplifiers, but not the M22s. Of course, the M22s are super hot, super heavy, and super not environmentally friendly. And as with all vintage gear, there's some level of risk involved, so I can't really recommend them unless you know someone who can maintain them for you. What I like the most about the shit agers is that they sound fantastic. Noise floor, clarity, separation, resolution, overtones, microdynamics, they have everything. They're uber detailed and they sound natural in a relaxed sound signature that's very engaging. They also sound better than a lot of more expensive amps and all of this in a small neat package that looks fairly decent. What I don't like about the shit agers is that they run hot and they're a bit heavy. Well, they're not really that heavy. It's that they're just a bit awkward to move. Because of the sharp fins on the side, if you try to move them, you might cut your hands. And it's a bit awkward if you try to hold them at the front and the back because of the cables. And then they do run hot. It's hot to the touch, and I'm a bit afraid they might shut down on extra hot days, but they still haven't failed so far. But I might get the fan in the future, just in case. And, and for me, the bass is decent, but I would understand if some people would probably want more SPL from them. But, but then again, they should probably get a subwoofer. What I hate about the Agers is that only 20 watts. And for people who have large rooms or inefficient speakers, 20 watts is not a lot to play with. If your speakers are 88 dB or less than 88 dB, you probably won't be able to use them to party, but I think maybe for casual listening, it will be enough. But, so, yeah, it, it certainly limits the use case a lot, but they simply sound superb, and if ever you need more headroom, you can always go mono, so I've been audio fooled. Full Class A, at the full price, with real classy sounds. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video!